Hey guys, Panther Gaming right here, right now, bringing you the third video of my fundamentals. Today we shall cover late game boards, which essentially you should start building on stage four. We'll cover composition selection, which typically is based on your items, whether you should roll or re-roll, because you can still play some reroll comps on level seven, when you should level, and whether you should actually kind of like pivot into your late game comp or perhaps play a prolonged mid game. So let's dive right into it. For your late game board, there's a lot of questions. What actually dictates what your late game board should be? Well, you look at your items. If you have mostly 80 items, you should consider 80 comps. If you have AP items, you go for AP comps. Now the tricky thing is, if you look at these items, RFC gives you mana. Runans is overall not a great item. Rageblade, that works for AP. Giant Slayer works for AP. QSS and Hodge also work for AP. The only thing you really don't want is a Last Whisper or Deathblade. If you have a Jewel Gauntlet, you can use an IE. And then for 80 comps, you typically don't want a Jeweled Gauntlet or a Death Cap, but otherwise you can kind of mix and match. So typically, if you're playing some something more AD heavy, you go into AD. If you're playing AP heavy, you go into AP. But the most important thing is to consider your augments and your champions. So for example, if you get an easy two-star Orianna, Seraphine, Renata, or somehow a legendary on seven or on eight, you just play a legendary with kind of a mix and match of these items because legendaries are super strong. And if you get Orianna, Seraphine, Renata, or even like a Draven 2 on 7 for free with like a, a Giant Slayer and a, a Jeweled Gauntlet with like a QSS, you can make it work. The thing is, if you stabilize super early, then you can go for a stronger board. So items should kind of give you some guidance, but don't forget about your augments and your champions. So now let's go into an example of a couple different, different late game boards. So here you're re-rolling on level seven and you're looking for Malzahar three star and you're looking for Cho'Gath three star. And usually you play some sort of bruiser. Obviously you can't play Alistar until level eight because you don't have enough room. So you play any bruiser, Vi's good, but if you don't find Vi, then you play any two star bruiser like Zach, who's getting a, a little bit of a buff. Um, ideally, you want to play this with Synaptic Web, which is getting a little bit of a nerf. Uh, I think Voidborn is still playable, which is Execute Mutants, and Synaptic Web, Web is uh, Mana Less Mutants. So those are good options. And like the thing, I, I didn't show you defensive items because, as you will see from, from all the boards, these are your kind of standard defensive items, right? Like you always want a Bramble Vest, always want a Declaw, always want a Redemption. And then other things like, like Warmogs, like Titans, like Sunfire, that all can go on your tank. Now, the most important thing is your Cho'Gath and your Mazahar. And Mazahar usually wants blue buff and Gunblade, possibly Shojin, Gunblade. And the other options are kind of flexible, right? Like if you have a Mazahar three star, if you have Merlin Obicon on him, it's really good. And then if you have like a Giant Slayer, all Jeweled Gauntlet, or Death Cap, they're all decent on Malzahar, right? These are not Kassan items, these are Malzahar items. And then any sort of AD items go on Kha'Zix, but typically you want to build Malzahar carry. But if you don't find Malzahar, like if you don't have your AP comp, you can still go for AD like with a Tank, Cho'Gath, and a Kha'Zix. The comp still works. And that's why I wanted to mention that like you can play either AD or AP if you're going for Mutants. And you want to make sure that the mutant trait is actually decent. Uh, for Kha'Zix, perhaps Blade Master or uh, rather like extra attacks is actually a decent mutant buff as well. But otherwise, not all the not all the mutant traits or like the mutant buffs are, are that great. Uh, what I wanted to mention before we go to the next slide is Arcanist. Uh, you can typically play Mazahar with Arcanist as well. So you have like Marzahar with uh, five other Arcanists, so you have six Arcanists, and then you can play like Scholars, which would be any two Scholars, like like Kassadin plus Syndra or Syndra plus Zyra. Uh, you can play Enchanters and Yordles, which would mean you would just play uh, 
Lulu and Oriana. And obviously you're playing Vex and Ziggs. Or you can play uh, Brom and uh, Blitz, which gives you Scrap and Bodyguard. And those are your level 8 boards, but on level 7 you're just rolling for Mazahar and for Vex. And you're just playing any, any plus 1 you have. So potentially if you're playing Ziggs, like if you're playing Ziggs and Vex, you're playing Lulu as well on 7. While you're re-rolling for your Vex 3 and your Mazahar 3. And if you find Zig 3 along the way and Lulu 3 along the way, you'll just be printing out uh, poppies and, and other yordles for some extra gold uh, if you 3-star everything. And then on level 8, as I mentioned, uh, for this board you want to add Alistar. So you have the Colossus buff on Cho'Gath. And for the Arcanist board, you just add what I mentioned, any any other synergy bots you, you can. And uh, another board which is more AP centric is Ari. Uh, and these are again, these are kind of ideal Ari items. She definitely wants blue buff. She definitely wants Gunblade. And then you can put a Death Cap on her. You can put a Giant Slayer on her or a Jewel Gauntlet. You don't care about Malzahar here. He's just a synergy bot. Um, so the thing is about the previous comp is on 4-1, you chill on seven and you just reroll to find your three stars. Now, the tricky thing is uh, you should typically level to 7 on 4-1 on four, or 4-2 four, and roll a little bit to stabilize. And by stabilizing, I'd say you want to have like 3, 4, 5 2-star units. Like if you hit a bunch of 2-star units, uh, if you find like your ideal units, that's amazing. But try not to replace 2-stars with 1-stars. That, that, never, that never helps. So on 7... If you have enough HP, you just roll a little bit to stabilize, and then you try to get to eight. Uh, if you're rich, you do you go to eight on four five. If you're not as rich, you go on on four seven. And there's possibility of going on five one or five two, but you need to have a lot of HP, or you need to have a really strong board to be able to do that. So again, ideally, you want to get to eight with this board because these synergies are are pretty sick. Like you have the bodyguards, you have the five syndicates, you have the enchanters, you have the scholars, and you have the arcanists. So possibly like you can you can cut Oriana unless you have two star Oriana on seven, so like you're not playing Oriana. And like again, if you're desperate, you just play one star Ari, uh, or you will like reroll for two star Ari on seven, which is not as likely to hit, but hopefully that can bail you out once you hit her. And yeah, let's move on to the next board. I just wanted to mention the, the frontline items, but the frontline items just don't change. The frontline items are always very similar, no matter what your frontline tank is. You just want to have some frontline items. And here I want to demonstrate all of the possible uh, items you can put on Sivir. It doesn't have to be Sivir, it can also be Draven. But here we have Sivir, or even if you're going for Senna 3. But for Senna, if you should be rolling on 7, not on 8. And then Irelia kind of likes these items. I think these are really good items. You want the QS so she doesn't get stuck. You want the IE to multiply her striker bonus. And then you want a last verse so she doesn't get stuck on a tank. Or possibly a Giant Slayer so she can slice through those tanks. And here, obviously you have the three socialite to give Irelia a socialite so she has healing. So these are like, I, I don't think Irelia is as flexible with items. Like she can also use Titans or Hodge, but Irelia kind of wants precise items while Sivir can use almost any 80 items, even like a RFC or a, she can use a Shiv actually decently well. She can use uh, lots of items like QSS, Hodge, whatever, whatever you have, like the Runans, whatever you have, you put on you put on Sivir. And then obviously, depending on like what you're finding. So like if you find uh, more Irelias and like you find the Innovator Comp, or if you're playing Innovator mid game, then you should probably consider like five Innovator for Scrap. If you're just uh, able to find Irelia and then somehow you have a Socialite uh, Emblem or Socialite Heart, and you find uh, Galio, then you can play five Socialite, which is super strong for Irelia. And then you, you just add, um, you can add a Bodyguard, like Brom is ideal. Or somehow if you get to nine or you have some sort of other augment, you can you can uh, cut one of your crappier units. You can put another Colossus. So then you'll have uh, two Colossus for your Galio. And that's like the Irelia comp. And then like Sivir comp, you can play, play her with Hextex. You can play her, her with multiple Strikers. Uh, the whole point is like this comp is overall very flexible so I want you to be able to like just look at okay I have some sort of IE and a giant slayer and I hit a two-star sivir okay 
that's great. So now, like, do I go for a bunch of hex decks, or do I go for a bunch of strikers, or do I just already have like uh, some two stars that I have in the front, like a Vi or a Brom? Like, the 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 whole point is you still want frontline backline. So if you have like Brom and Leona, and then you have like Vi Sejuani, and then you have like a Sivir and a J four, and then you can add like some one more one more hex deck like a like a random lucian or perhaps you can add an alistar and then you just have like insane frontline and you just gotta make sure you position Sivir safely enough so say so that she doesn't die uh like if you're playing against ari for example which i forgot to mention in the last slide ari is really important that you position her correctly so she throws her balls and kills the carry so like if ari is on the left and your Sivir's on the right then she's safe but if, if I put my Ari on the right and your Sivir's on the right and Ari throws her balls and hits your Sivir, she can kill your Sivir. So that's just like important to position your carry safely. While at the same time, when you're playing like a, a carry that has a kind of a skill shot, as we learned from League of Legends, you got to make sure that they throw their skill shot and kill key targets. And obviously, like, yeah, you, you don't really care about the other units. You just care about Sivir, potentially Irelia, and then obviously a tank. Seraphi can use Morellos. And you don't want, like, all these... You don't want Seraphi to have these items or Sarah to have these items, but you just just to demonstrate all the possibilities. And the final board I want to I wanna show you is this board. Again, you really want to get to level 8. As I mentioned before, like, 4, 5, 4, 7, 5, 1, 5, 2, whatever you can. Uh, basically, you... Once you level... To eight, you want to have enough economy to actually roll. So, like, if you get to eight with less than ten gold, so you you can see like two, three shops and like buy one unit. That's pointless. You gotta have thirty or more gold so you can actually roll. Uh, the reason I like this comp in particular is because if you find the VIP Draven, I think he's really strong. If you're able to find him on six or on seven, he will stabilize you super hard. You just need decent frontline. So if you have like Leona and Blitz or like uh, a two-star Morgana with tank items, like you're going to be relatively fine because Draven does a lot of damage and he's just going to chill in the back. Uh, again, like the items that we had here, he can use most of these items, right? I think these are probably some of the best items because he has a lot of HP. So he, like if you have some sort of healing argument, that's great. But like this way, he'll do a lot of damage. Syndra's going to protect him. Oriana might, might try to protect him. Zyra might protect him if like a lot of units come to the back. Leona should be protecting him with, with uh, her tankiness. You can put Brom in the back against a lot of assassins. You just want to make sure that your Draven is safe. Uh, some people build like a BT or Hodge on him. That works too. But having Ragebait, IE, Giant Slayer just gives him maximum damage. And being with unlimited range, he'll just pop off and kill everything as long as he's relatively safe. And uh, since he's a Debonair, he'll have extra health. And then there's like, again, other units you can play along this. Like you can swap some of these units out. Like Morgana can go out if you have a Debonair Heart or a Debonair Spatula and you just play uh, another Debonair like a Zeri or Talon. Zeri is going to be popping off uh, next patch because they actually bug fix her. So if you have any extra items, you throw them on Zeri and she'll, she'll put in uh, a lot of work. So these are kind of like the four compositions I wanted to mention. Obviously, I mentioned additional ones. But yeah, you wanna you can either reroll on seven, and you're playing Malzahar or Arcanist or some other comp like uh, Senna or possibly MF, or you just go to eight and you play kind of standard-ish and you wanna find a decent board with very good traits. So like this board is inflexible, this board is flexible, this board is inflexible. So it's good to kind of know okay if I'm gonna be going for for Draven or for Ari, I should probably be holding on to the important one cost or like the additional synergy bots like Syndra and Camille here. Here you want to make sure you have a Zyra and you have a Darius if you decide to go for the Ari route. And if you go for Malzahar, then uh, you're going to be rerolling for this board or looking for more Arcanists. So uh, one more pro tip. Uh, again, think about your augment on 4-6. So on 4-5, perhaps you can consider playing a weak, weaker board of one stars with your late game board in mind. And you're going to augment based on the board you have. So if you're playing this, you should be more likely to get like a Clockwork or a Challenger or a Debonair. Maybe you get, maybe you get uh, Enchanter or even like Syndicate would work here. 
if you get a bodyguard that's also decent, right? So like maybe you pivot a little bit sooner and then you get a decent augment. Uh, you can do it on level level seven, like if you're four, five, level seven, or you can level up to eight and just kind of field a, a weaker board, knowing that you're gonna lose on four, six, but knowing that you have at least 20, 30 gold and you'll have more gold on the on the PVE round and then you're gonna roll down on five, one, but you're more likely to get a better augment based on the units you have in play. So just to recap quickly, you should level and roll on seven almost always, whether it's four, one or four, two, and you're looking to two star your board. Now, if you two star a lot of your, kind of like the units that you have, your mid game units, you can sort of prolong the mid game because you're not gonna bleed that much. So if you get a lot of two stars of the units you already have on the board, you can kind of chill on stage four and maybe level on four, five, or like if you if you have enough HP, you just level on four seven, and then you roll a little bit on on four seven and five one to kind of pivot into your late game board, which you which you'll get uh, on level eight. So I, I recommend that that roll down on four seven because you need extra time to take your units out, put your units in. So maybe roll down to thirty on four seven when you're already level eight, and then on five one you continue rolling, you continue pivoting. Uh, the alternative is obviously rerolling your your uh, three cost carries to three star uh, and then the the kind of standard way to play is you just level up and you roll down on eight uh, based on how desperate you are like if you're super desperate you just run down on seven because you don't want to level to eight if you have like 10 or 20 gold you don't want to do that um, so if you're desperate you just roll it down on seven and hopefully you find your two star Ari, two star draven irelia Sivir, whatever you need and that'll kind of bail you bail you out and maybe you get a top four, but like you're aiming for like a top six, or you kind of standard get to eight and roll down eight. And obviously like the, the less gold you have on eight, the more desperate the play is. So if you have like 30, 40 gold, you're more likely to hit your units. If you're like going to eight with 20 gold, that's not that many shops. Cause like 20 gold gets you 10 shops. But if you want to two star your Epic, that's going to cost you 12 gold. So that means you only have four shops then you can like, you look, look at four shops and you wanna buy three units. And then maybe you wanna buy more units and you just don't have enough gold. So keep in mind that you need to have enough gold to do everything, like all of your fancy late game pivots. And as well, keep your end game boards in mind, which we'll discuss in the next video, but perhaps you're super strong. So maybe you should be pushing, pushing for nine. Maybe you should be looking for a three star four cost. And uh, yeah, maybe you should be fitting into legendaries, but we'll discuss that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, if you want more information uh, or you want coaching, join the Discord where we're ready to help you. And please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Path of Gaming out. Peace.